Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the Kishu cuttings. Will they have any roots? I'm a firm believer in lifelong learning and I've got a ton to learn with Bonsai without question. Recently, while searching through some of my Bonsai YouTube channels, I was watching uh, Bonsify. So if you haven't checked them out, I uh, highly re recommend you do that and uh, check out some of their very uh, informative videos. So Bonsify, so Bonsai and then FY. So check that out on YouTube. And he recently did a, I don't know if it was the Kishu Shimpaku, um, but he did a Shimpaku Juniper cutting repot twisting with some wires and getting some of these whips to kind of get some early shape because they're still bendable right now. And these are cuttings that I have from my Peter T workshop from over a year ago now. And I took some cuttings. I think I had three containers and, and um, I think some of these, the containers, uh, I might have lost a few because I had more than just the two, I think. This one still has the two big ones and then this one over here. I have no idea if there's a single root on these. Um, of course, the humorous part about this pot is I have these three other trees in here. And this is all maple growth from the first year from all those maple seeds that flew out of my neighbor's uh, place. And this one right here is almost as thick as a pencil at the bottom in one year's growth. There's a set of buds here, there's a set of buds down here, there's a set of buds here, 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 and here. So, you know, we could essentially chop all these and we're gonna get some growth next year. Uh, we'll let this grow crazy. This one has a little bit of movement at the bottom of the trunk. It kind of goes to the, kind of goes to the left here, your right, and then it shoots up. So if we can cut this thing over here and have some branches come over here, we can have this kind of swooping tree someday. So uh, always uh, keeping as many trees alive as we can. But I want to investigate, because after watching Bonesify, I was shocked to see him working on the Kishu this late in the season. And uh, one of the things that um, he reminded me in the video, uh, which I probably have shared before on this channel, is that depending upon your growing situation and your plant room and, and, and what you've got for circumstances, um, you can take care of some of these trees and let them um, grow um, and take care of them in a better um, aftercare situation. So even though it was late October, pushing November, cutting most of the roots off and doing a complete repot in October, for a juniper. Um, and so that, even I get a little nervous about thinking about that. So today what I wanna do is I wanna dig into these pots. They're really big pots. Um, and I'm gonna put them into these littler ones. I have a couple of uh, small, I got a lot of these mediums. And uh, we'll put one tree per pot so I can monitor them better um, instead of having them in this big space. So I'm just gonna dig in and we're gonna see what, what, what's going on with the root system, if any. And if there's nothing in there, we'll have them in individual pots and uh, maybe we'll keep them here in my plant room and see if they take off. So going back to what I, I, I believe I understood from, from Bonesify and what they were talking about with this Kishu in this time of year is that what I can do this year with a cutting and with these young roots um, is that I can keep this indoors and help it recover for a while. Um, and even if it recovers for a month or so, um, I can probably recover it through the rest of November and December and then I can put it out into the cold frame and let it be in the cold frame for January, February and then March when we consider to move things around again, it'll have the ability to go dormant still. Um, always looking for dormancy, uh, eight weeks minimum I believe, uh, 12 is even better. Um, of course 16 weeks is pushing that four month frame. We certainly have that in Minnesota with the trees outside. But these are super small. But I noticed on a couple of them, um, there was uh, even a little bit of back budding, um, which means new growth right here. So I think this little piece right here is new growth, which would let me to believe it's getting enough moisture. Now, whether it's getting enough moisture from roots or not, we're gonna find out right now. So we're gonna go ahead and dig into these. And while we do uproot these, well then we'll have these to put in pots and I have some maple trees uh, for, for next year. We're down in the plant room where it's nice and toasty. I've been a little chilled today in some of the stuff I've done, but down here in the tropic of the plant room, 
I think we have 73 degrees and 90% humidity. It's a little stuffy in here, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and take off that flannel shirt. So let's see what these two are doing here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna peel back some of this dirt here. Loosen this up from the pot. And I'll probably be able to pull it right out by these maple trees. Well, sure enough. So I'm not sure what the root system is gonna look like from the maples, or again, if there's any from these Kishu Shimpaku junipers that I acquired as cuttings from my own tree, um, being a part of the uh, fundamentals class through the Minnesota Bonsai Society's fundamentals class with Peter T. Super amazing to work with Peter, great teacher. We're getting our first snowfall that's going to stick to the grass and wake up tomorrow with a, with a coating of snow on the ground. The benches will all be full of some snow. So when I'm done filming tonight and put this portion of the video to bed, I hope to wake up tomorrow and get some really cool shots of the bench and that'll be my update for, for this video. So it remains to be seen, but we're hoping for a snowy update. So there are roots in here for sure. And that's telling me that these maple trees have produced a ton of roots in this pot over the course of this summer from these seedlings from my neighbor's tree. There were a lot of seeds this year. Um, I'm not sure if that's because of the dry conditions that we had. We didn't have a ton of rain, but most of the maple trees seem to have the most success around my pond. And the creeks that go, the creek that goes from the top pond to the bottom pond had a whole bunch of maple trees that were just growing like crazy where there was water touching the roots 24 seven. But then when I turned the pond off a couple times throughout the summer, those trees would seem to shrivel up really quickly. Look at all these roots. This is fabulous. So at least my maple trees are gonna get a new home. And this of course isn't the best time to repot a maple to say the least, but I'm just trying to find out what the key shoes are doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate these out. So I'm working very carefully. I'm not gonna cut I don't think I'm gonna cut any of these roots because I don't want to create any more damage or any stress on this tree. Although it's been in my cold frame now for a couple of days and we've gotten close to freezing outside, these roots are probably gone into that dormancy stage because we've had a couple of uh, colder days now, but again, cold frame, temperatures in that 40 range. Okay, got a little bit loosened up there. But yeah, I'm not gonna probably cut these roots. I'm just gonna stuff them into these smaller pots with some, some new soil, some fresh soil, and then we're gonna keep them in the cold frame. And again, these were free seeds from the neighbor's tree if they don't make it with 100% success. Look at these wraparound roots. Look, look at that, yeah, they, they really wanted to grow. So we're gonna get them set up to grow for another complete year in a new pot for next year. These Just these nursery pots quart size or whatever they are. And then we'll be able to hopefully let them just shoot up like crazy again next year, thicken up even more. Maybe even put a couple of twists in these with some wires. You know, this just fell loose. And as I was worried about, look at that. So I got all these wonderful roots in the maples, but look at this Kishu Shimpaku that looks completely green. It appears to be soft and supple. Life to it. And I do not see a single root on there. Same with this one. Oh no, there's a root right there. So this one has nothing on there. But this one has two roots going right there two roots going out that way. So we can put this back in the pot. I'll put this one back in the pot too, and we'll let this continue to uh, do its thing. 
and hopefully push out some more roots. As long as there's our root there, there's two roots there, we'll be able to get some, uh, hopefully some movement. And I've never done a shimpaku before, cutting, or I, th I don't think any juniper. So this was my first attempt. So let's get these trees separated and then we'll be able to get all these into some pots. This one was at the curve of the pot. Here's my drainage screen. Look at that. So take that drainage screen right off. And here's the tree right down here. This just grew solid against the back. Again, this was a seed. We got all these roots going here and here and here and here and here and here. We got lots of roots. So I said I wasn't gonna cut these roots, but I don't need these long ones. I just simply don't need those long ones. The rest of it stays untouched and we put it in one of these pots right here. We're gonna be able to get some more growth. So with so many roots on here, I think I'm gonna feel a little bit more comfortable trimming some more than I expected to because that's just too many. We want it to fit in this pot. And again, it's just going back in the nursery pot with some recycled bonsai soil. So we'll get some good drainage. And then we'll work on this system next year. So we'll get that in here. And then this one. I'm not gonna do a single thing to that one. And that one's gonna go in here. There's the one with the curve on there. Look at that root system. Kind of bends down here, but look at that curve in that tree right now. Yeah. So we can get that one in a, in a pot. And then these two key shoes we'll put, uh, I only got one smaller pot. Maybe I have some more in here. We'll just get them into these pots and then hope for the best. I expected not very many roots, but I certainly hope for more than that. Absolutely, of course, not going to cut any of those roots off right there. So it probably goes without saying, but we're not going to twist and bend any trees that don't have any roots on them. This one has some promise. It's got some roots, a couple of them growing. Hopefully they'll keep feeding out there. This one has no roots at all. Um, but it stayed alive from the watering that was uh, daily and kept moist and uh, We'll see if we can get some roots between now and uh, and uh, next season um, So we'll keep them both this one's green and still alive um, and hasn't died on me So the moisture's getting in there. Hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some growth um, So we'll set these aside and we'll give them a water and we have these two I don't have my normal chopstick, but I have a wooden pencil here. So I want to make sure I don't have some gaping holes down in there. So this is the one that was right up against the uh, big pot there. And so there's not much roots there right on this side. But there's still gaps in there. So too much air, of course, too much oxygen is going to kill off some of those roots in there if we're not careful. So we went ahead and tamped that down, put some more soil in there. And then when we get some water in there, we got that one taken care of. And this one as well. And then um, we'll put this back in the cold frame. So these two maples are gonna go in the cold frame. No question about that. Um, they came from the cold frame. We did cut off some of the big roots on here. We just put them into new pots. We'll give them some fresh water and we'll put them in the cold frames. I'll probably put them in my cabin cold frame, um, excuse me, the garage cold frame because I'll have easier access to them and make sure they're watered because I can just open up my big doors and I can see them right there. I can water them real good. So uh, I'll keep those in the uh, garage cold frame. And then I have to decide what to do with these. Um, I'm all about learning more. Anybody out there, give me your knowledge with some Shimpaku cuttings. Now, they've kind of cooled down with the temps. We haven't had really a hard freeze before these went into the cold frame. So now, do I keep them in my plant room? Do I put them in my not so bright room and not so warm room with my other fish tank? 
which is my old plant room, or, or do I just put them right back in the cold frame? And with the cold frame being at 40 degrees, it's not gonna dry out, it's gonna be moist all winter long, and then next season when things warm up and the light gets more increased, uh, they start to grow some roots. So that is the uh, first batch of trees, and we'll see uh, what we got with that uh, moving down the road. So we have this other pile of uh, trees. What is this one gonna show us? So these are gonna break apart right here. I'm gonna find out in a hurry what these have on them. I'm gonna be super gentle though, just in case. We've got some growth over here. Oh, it's coming up too easy. Ah, but we have roots. Now, I don't know if they're viable roots, but we have roots. So I don't see any white tips on the roots of this guy, but there are roots. But that looks like it's pretty much goner there. Yeah, they're just, they're just falling apart. They're just super fragile. I don't think there's any white tips on any of these at all to speak of. So I don't know if that one's gonna do anything. So I'll break up some of this soil. I bet you this is a lot of roots from that maple creeping around. Got plenty of roots on the maple. Oh, here we go, everybody. Here we go. I just lost my camera light, or my, uh, my, my tree lights. Let's put those back on, but look at those roots. All right, let's get those lights back on. All right, we're back with lights, here we go. So, I obviously don't have enough roots to do any twisting and twirling and stressing out this tree, but I have a lot of roots on there. One of those small trees had a root that was maybe a quarter inch long. This is multiple, uh, two inches maybe on some of these. And some of them here, this one looks like right here that it died back, but, but it got some white root tips here. So we're not gonna cut any of those off. We're just gonna go ahead, cut off these dead branches. And I have this low branch here and this root that tried to grow right there. We're gonna keep that branch and we're just gonna bury this into our new uh, pot and we're gonna keep that one. So we got one, we got one that's uh, maybe gonna survive and do okay. We'll put that one back in the cold frame for sure. Um, <clears throat> and again, I might be able to keep it <clears throat> in this environment to stimulate some growth, but the, since the trees are on their way down for the, for the fall and winter, I'm thinking it's gonna be best to put those right into the cold frame. So let's get into this guy here. I got all kinds of roots. Oh, this one's moving around too easily. When it moves around that easily, it probably doesn't have roots. And a couple that tried and then didn't work out. So nothing there. And this is the one that had the little growth right here. Two spots where there's back budding here. Where that, that could be new, could have been new. Oh, there's a little tiny one back there. So there's, there's, um, there's energy flowing up and down this trunk to get these new growths down here, unless they were there the whole time, but they look too new compared to this growth. So nothing right there, that, that's, that's a root. It certainly tried, but uh, and that one tried. We'll put them in rocks and we'll keep them alive because there is live viable tips on here. We'll just clean off the dead stuff and we'll hope for the best, who knows? They've been in the pot for a year and they're still alive and there's some back budding. I don't know. We'll let the experiment go on for another year. All right, and then we have this beast. This is gonna be a wrap around root system that look at that, is capturing all of this dirt. How about that? Okay, that root is just, look at that. That is a thick root right there. Look at that. That's just one year growth. Just one year of growth. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna cut that off there. These pots aren't big enough for this tree right here. I'm gonna have to go back into this pot right here. Look at that, huh? I think I shall. 
these other pots are just too little. I don't want to cut all these feeder roots off because I want it to survive. So we'll put that in the big one, or the, or the medium one, I should say. And we'll put those in there, okay. Okay, so for the one with all the roots, we're just gonna lay that one in there. I will trim off the very bottom here. Since the roots grew up higher, fan out all these roots just a little bit. Might as well fan them out a little bit now to promote some better growth in the end. Spread them out. Be careful not to damage those roots down there. Now we're worrying about too many air pockets because there's just too few roots in there. So we'll get some water on that guy. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put the other two that don't have any roots back in this one um, because we don't know if they're gonna do anything. And that's all we can do. And we'll see if keeping these, I think with my experiment, here's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna keep the two that don't have any roots in the plant room. And I'm just gonna keep in here and see if we can grow some roots. The other ones are gonna go in the cold frame. All right, time to pop this guy up. I got a few roots on either side here. It grew kind of out to two sides. And we're just gonna put this right back in the cold frame. Remember, this, these, these roots are thinking it's definitely dormant, so we have to take care of those. So there we have our three maples. The three maples are in their new pots. We'll get those back in the cold frame tonight. We'll give them some fresh water and then they're gonna do just fine. I'm not worried about those so much and they are free, they are free seeds from the neighbor's trees. So then we have our Kishu Shimpaku. These two middle ones here had the roots and these two outer ones did not. So we're gonna put these um, here in the plant. We're gonna leave them right here and experiment and see if we can get some roots this, uh, this winter in the warm climate here. And then if we get some roots, then we'll get this, these trees dormant next year. Um, one of the things about dormancy is that, yeah, sure, you can grow tr uh, plants inside for a year or two, but each year you don't let that tree completely rest and get dormant, it's gonna make the tree weaker, weaker, and weaker. So by theory, I should be able to keep these moist in the plant room. Um, I'll miss them uh, at least once a day. They'll get watered, and uh, we'll see if we get some new, new roots. So that's those. These are the two that survive with some roots. We might get some quiches out of here because the roots are there. It's time for me to go put the trees into the cold frame, the garage cold frame. I'll have easy access, we'll get these watered. And so now, let's give you an update. And actually, as I say this, the update hasn't even happened yet because we're waiting to see how much snow we actually get. The snow, the grass, uh, when I went out to get these trees to work on them this evening, the grass was covered almost about three-fourths of the way. So we might have a complete, just a, just a coating of snow right over all the blades of grass. It'll look white outside, and we'll get some shots tomorrow for the update of the trees that are still outside and gonna get ready to move to that final resting spot in the uh, vegetable garden. And maybe tomorrow we'll put them there after we get some cool photographs of the trees. Let's get these inside the uh, cold frame.
Today's update was all about seeing the beautiful new snowfall on the bonsai and getting all the bonsai trees inside the vegetable garden to keep away from some of the bigger critters, namely the rabbits. The squirrels, especially the red ones, might come in here and wreak some havoc. And I have some voles, uh, some mice that could create some uh, issues. No, but they leave most of these pines and conifers alone. Uh, there might be a few stragglers that they try to chew on this year. Hopefully we'll just get a lot of snow and it'll blanket all these trees. So I have one spot left here for the uh, Minnesota Forest number two. I want to take a, a crack at uh, trimming, pruning some of those uh, um, uh, dwarf uh, spruces. Uh, so I'm going to get that done at the next episode. So we've got that up on the uh, workbench. And so then I've got a couple trees left. And so with that Minnesota Forest right here and a couple of these more tucked in around the edges, we are going to be crammed full this year. Trees are taking shape, nice beautiful snow. When it warms up uh, Tuesday of this week, all this snow will melt. We'll get one last watering here. And then the temps are gonna be somewhere between uh, 18 and 40 degrees throughout the days and nights for the next couple of weeks. So the trees will be really, really in good shape. All the trees that have the roots are in the cold frame. Uh, we got them watered and they're going to be in a nice comfortable 38 to 40 degree temperature range, 37 to 42, probably all winter long. Um, and then the humidity, um, I haven't checked that recently, but the humidity has been okay. Nothing too drastically high, nothing too drastically low. Of course, every time I water in the uh, cold frames, the humidity shoots up for a while and then it slowly creeps back down. So that does it for another show. We are going to keep these in the plant room. So wish me luck. And again, if anybody Anybody has super experience, knowledge, info for the lifelong learner. Um, I would love some comments on your uh, junipers, yeah, if you have Kishu or uh, any of your Shampaku varieties, how you've had success with cuttings. This was my first attempt and uh, it's nice that we saw roots on about 50% of what I saw here, uh, but the other ones just didn't do very well. Maybe that's typical for Shimpaku, maybe that's typical for Juniper, but shoot me the knowledge. I'd certainly love to learn more, learn more, and as I learn more, I'll keep sharing more here on Dave's Bonsai. Let's get him in a nice spot. Hey, take care of you, take care of your Bonsai, and we'll catch you on the next one.